You are listening to The Unglamorous Life, and today is a special edition episode. I guess, what is it, a subcast, maybe? Sure. So, um, I'm Celeste, and Lauren is not here today, but in her place, we have Chris Kingman. Um, and before he introduces himself, I'm going to throw out a few ideas for this, like, sub podcast. Um, you had mentioned Trashcast, <laughs> which I think is a winner. So whatever you guys think, give us your feedback. Um, so, okay. So who is Chris? Who is Chris Kingman? Um, I was, I didn't give you any type of yeah. introduction. I'm I such thought a, you were going to give it to me. Um, such a piece of shit. My name is Chris Kingman. Um, I'm a executive coach and enablement practitioner. I focus on uh, helping young executives sort of build out their businesses um, people that have got maybe a product or an idea and they're, you know, they're past the, the ideation stage to really get the business going. Um, and I, I would say, you know, I'm just uh, somebody that interacts with you on a daily basis, uh, whether I choose to or not. So <laughs> if someone s- sat down with you and asked you, okay, what do you do for Celeste? Like, what would you say? Like, how would you just, how would you define our relationship? Uh, I would say I'm a combination of a mentor, a coach, and a consultant for you. I mentor you on business, um, becoming an executive, becoming sort of this boss lady that you, you know, you've laid out that you want to become and represent the strong woman that you want to become and represent and show other people. I coach you through how to run a business, um, the aspects of the day-to-day stuff, like the really, you know, the, the really boring business stuff that people don't get to see all the time. And then I'd run normal business consulting functions for you, like operational improvements or, you know, personnel things, technology things, stuff like that. So, like, I call you when I'm freaking out for stuff, basically? Uh, That might have happened once (laughs) or twice. Uh, Well, I would say that our... How long has it been? It's been maybe, like... It's been six months almost. God, that's crazy. I will say we've come a long way, or, like, I have. Um, But I remember... When I was first even entertaining the idea, uh, I met you through a mutual friend, mm-hmm. Brian, the Gorilla Chemist. The Gorilla Chemist, yep. Yes. Um, and he, you know, I was talking, I think it was at the Olympia. We mm-hmm. were good friends and we had a chance to sit down and have lunch. And he was like, and I was telling him like all the stuff I was kind of going through with my business and kind of what I was struggling with and what my goals were. And he was like, it sounds like you, you know, he gave me his opinion, obviously, and Brian's super smart, but he was like, why don't you sit down with Chris? Like, he's done so much for me and my brand and whatever, whatever. And so that's kind of how it started. And I know, like, our first our, our first meeting, I was kind of like, I don't know. Um, just didn't really even know how to categorize, like, what I wanted or what I needed mm-hmm. help with. Yeah, that the first meeting, uh, we <laughs> sat down for three hours. <laughs> um and I, I mean, I really only asked you two things, like tell me everything wrong with your business. And then, you know, it, I came out with it still in this book, like six, seven pages of stuff that you're <laughs> like, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. What do I do with this? What do I do with that? And then uh, the other part was, you know, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? Let's, let's fast forward three years in the future. What does it look like? Who are you? Who, you know, who's your audience? Who subscribes to Celeste? And then we sort of jotted out your your vision of who you become who you want to become and then that's kind of fueled you know i'd take that back and reverse engineer it into sort of how i guide you moving forward honestly that was like an extremely hard conversation for me to have Mm -hmm. those are they seem like easy questions but they weren't easy for me just because i had um like was in a marriage and that i didn't i went through such a dramatic change and uh like maybe like the six months leading up to that, to to our first conversation, where if someone asked me six months prior to our first conversation, those questions, my answers would have been Mm -hmm. completely different. And I was um, struggling so much because I went from kind of being in a bat, like a backseat position in running my business to now being like fully in charge of everything 100% and kind of not knowing what to focus on and how to delegate stuff and what I needed. And then also, I didn't ever take a chance to sit down and think about like what I wanted for me personally, mm-hmm. like and what I thought I could like be capable of or whatever. So it was like a, it, they seem like really like who do you want to be or what do you want to do? Those are those are really hard questions for me six months ago, and they would have been even harder yeah. a year ago. They're hard for everybody, um, and that's why I you know an initial conversation is limited to those two. 
Those two questions. <laughs> Simon just hit a metal rooster. The metal cock. <laughs> the metal cock in the corner. <laughs> Get it together. We're on a podcast. Um, that's why I limit it to two questions, right? And the, they're not easy questions, um, especially in in the situation uh, that the situation your business was in when we, you know, we sort of linked up was um, everything seemed to be on fire. So everything's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's a problem. And that's why um, I like those two questions. The way I framed it when I talked to you was like, you know, what sucks right now, right? That's that's how I asked you the question, what sucks? And it takes pressure off. It's like, you know, don't, whoa, where's your revenue falling short? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, asking it in that fashion, you're just like, oh, okay. <sighs> Yeah. You dump everything out and it's like, okay, tell me about that. Tell me about that. Tell me about it. And we it's like a therapy it. session though. It kind well, of was. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you talk a lot about work-life balance. Um, I don't think that exists anymore, right? You can't, especially you, you are your brand. You can't separate. You can't walk away, right? right. You're, you're Celeste, your celestial bodies all day, every day. And so it's so much part of you that um, as you were, as you were talking through it, it's, it's, Personal, professional, personal, professional, you know, and, and those are a lot of the things that we sort of work through. And over time, we've been able to separate that stuff, too, and sort of work through the challenges. But it's always that, like you said, therapy is like, just vent. Yeah. Let them vent. And that's, um, I mean, that's always my first go-to thing is, by the end of it, we were there for three hours, and you, I could see you were like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Sinking into her chair as she like finally, a, somebody finally listened to everything she had yeah. to say. Um. No, and that initial conversation really kind of, I know when you want to say that when you think about what's going on in my brain, it's like a monkey, like picking lice <laughs> off another monkey, but it like, it really got some, like the gears turning, like, okay, well, if this is realistic in six months, a year, three years, like my goals, um, like, how am I going to do these things? Like what, what changes do I need to make? And, um, like, what can I do right now today? Like what, you know, what counts today? So it kind of put me in this, um, like, kind of just motivated me, just the conversation. So um, from that day, six months ago to now, like, our relationship has changed um, because I think I'm, like, a little bit more confident in myself now. So I'm like, okay, well, here's what I did this week. Here's what I want to do. Um, here's all the things that I took care of that needed to be taken care mm -hmm. of, and, like, here's where we are now. Um, so I feel like a little bit more in, well a lot more in control of things like especially my life and I've also I think that you've done a really good job of helping me understand that like social bodies is social bodies I am social bodies but I'm also Celeste and mm -hmm. like that I need to work on um just get, getting this other side of myself out there like the you know yeah I was like a professional wrestler and yeah I saw like ass pants <laughs> but I'm also like a like a young executive and yeah. and um I have a lot on my plate and I'm a woman and like there's all these like really cool avenues that I can um, like not take advantage of but but, but where I have because I have such a big platform where I can really like speak to people like here's what I struggle with I know you probably struggle with this too but and here's how you know here's what I went through and here's how I handled it or overcame it or her, here's all I fucked up and then learned from it or whatever and so um, I think I've just realized so much more that I have the opportunity to reach people that are like-minded and like are in a, a similar situation or mm -hmm. um career career wise i guess yeah um i think everyone has an audience that's something that um you know some some 20 year old woman sitting at home who's in college or whatever may want to do something similar or has an idea for a shoe and is is like i could never do this like there's an audience for everything there's an absolute audience for everybody out there um and that's part of sort of our work together is just like, okay, let's figure out who your audience is. Who, who do you want to speak to? Who likes you? Um, and there are, it's, you're not limited to one. That's the amazing thing, right? You have this massive WWE family that still loves you. Like on the vlog, you talked about the trading cards. Mm -hmm. I thought it was incredible that people still send them in <laughs> and you're like, Hey, by the way, send me the envelope <laughs> and I'll send it right back. That's great. Right. And then you've got all the celestial bodies, um, people that buy the pants, right? Because in South Florida, you can't go anywhere without seeing these pants. Right? You see them at the grocery store at this point. You see them everywhere. And then the really cool thing is, you know, you put out, it was, uh, was it October? You put out this really long Instagram post about, you know, it was a photo from a year ago when you had just checked in or checked out? Checked out. Checked out, right? And it was this really long thing that you wrote about how you felt and like 
how you've come so far. And it was, you put it out there. And the funny thing is, is that TMZ said something, which was, took it way out of context. <laughs> As always, it's, that's TMZ though. Right? But the, um, the comments under the feed were huge. It's probably one of your most popular and engaged posts. Mm -hmm. And it's um, just that right there, opening yourself up, was a completely new audience. And then the treatment center reached out to you. And then the vlog started happening. And you get more and more engagement. So whatever you have to talk about, there's somebody out there that's it's going to resonate with and it's going to make complete sense. And, you know, it's kind of like, um, I like Gary V, like mm -hmm. just like everybody else. And the thing that resonated with me, with him was when he said that he was a poor student, right? Like I was a oh, cool entrepreneur guy, wine library. That's great. And then he was like, I sucked at school. I sucked at school. Everybody told me I was going to be a failure. And then I just worked my ass off and I was like, I sucked at school too. <laughs> We're soulmates. Which is the first person who's ever said they sucked at school and successful, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I think, you know, what what we're trying to do together is is make you this, whatever it is that you are and whoever you speak to, make that as loud and clear as possible. How did you, um, how did you get into what you do? So professionally, um, I'm in what's called sales enablement. So I just help salespeople. I help develop salespeople. You enable train people. Them. I enable people. <laughs> You're an yeah, enabler. I am. Um, so I, I'm actually pretty seasoned in that field and, and um, very experienced thought leader as well. But part of that is just working with people, right? And when you train people, when you work with people, when you when you try to develop them professionally, um, whether it's just teaching them how to sell or, or taking like, you know, somebody who's pretty strong and turning them into a leader or a manager. Um, you have to focus a lot on like who they are and working with them. And it's that professional, personal stuff. It, it blends and it blurs because you may have stuff professionally that you need to work on. You may have stuff personally you need to work on. Both of them impact both as well. Um, so I just started there and I, I started, you know, coaching people. I started developing people. Do you remember the first person that you started coaching? That I mentored? Yeah. Oh, wow. Years ago, college. Well, wait, let's talk really quick. Professionally or, or just as a mentor? Well, first of all, let's talk about the difference between a mentor and a coach. Sure. Um, so a coach is somebody that's going to like coach you to develop skills, right? Think football coach, pass, tackle, et cetera. I don't know. Sports is the real thing. <laughs> You're like dunk. I don't yeah. know. Football, home run. Um, the coach is going to help you develop all the necessary skills. So in our relationship, you know, I coach you to be like, okay, let's stop swearing so much. <laughs> God damn it. Yep. Let's stop saying this. Let's <laughs> stop doing that. Okay. When, you know, when you're speaking to a group, stand up, do this, do that. Um, the mentor is the one that wants to help you develop, um, like the, the soft skills, right? So how you interact with people, how you talk with people, the emotion, um, like working on your emotional intelligence, mentoring you in all aspects, helping you get there on your own. Right. And a lot of our interactions, I don't tell you and I try not to tell you what to do. I ask you, well, what do you think you should do? What do you think's the best answer? What happens if we don't do anything? Things like that, right? It's developing your cognitive abilities, your thinking abilities. Um, and those those lines can blur. Mentor, coach, coach, mentor. They they go back and forth. So th so that being said then, who was who was the first do you feel comfortable talking about like the first person that you like had that mentor yeah. or coach relationship with? Um, professionally. So I worked with a seller who wanted to become a sales leader and he needed a lot of help with his personal skills, how he interacted with people, how he talked to people, how he presented himself and came off. And, you know, we almost had to like dull the knife. He, it was just too abrasive. It was too forward. It was too blunt. Worked on his people skills, worked on his presentation, worked on how he approached things, how he talked to people, how he interacted and got engagement from people um because there's you know when you own a company and you know this um you can ask somebody to do something or you can tell them it's not your choice it's theirs right i can say hey celeste i really need you to stock the warehouse or celeste go stock the warehouse it's the same thing it's how you present that and we really had to work on how he presented stuff and and you know his attitude and his frustrations and dealing with a, well a gigantic corporate structure and how it moved and you know lo and behold after almost a year of mentoring and coaching and it was w once twice maybe three times a month became a sales leader and we still you know still work together closely all the time that's really cool like that that, that was yeah. your, your first yep. um he's still your mentor virginity 
Um, I was kind of the, I am still the, I'm the opposite of that. Like, so <laughs> I'm, I hate confrontation and that mm-hmm. sucks sometimes. Like when you're a bo- like when you own a company and you're like the boss of, you know, you have employees. Mm-hmm. So, and there's like a couple of situations where I'm like, I was uncomfortable saying certain things or there was like things that I was unhappy with and I didn't quite know like how to approach it. Mm-hmm. So like, what would you say to somebody that had, that has like an authoritative like position um, and they have trouble with confrontation? Um, it doesn't have to be confrontational, right? You can, so it goes back to the example. I can tell you to go stock the warehouse or I can ask you. There's two, there's always two ways to approach it. And a lot of stuff that you and I have worked on is always, it can be, whatever you were presenting could be immediately viewed as a negative, but you highlight the positives of that situation. Like your position's not changing. We're creating new opportunities for you, right? Or our company's growing. I'm going to hire somebody to do this work because you work really hard and I want you to go do other stuff. I want you to go develop elsewhere, you know? It doesn't have to be confrontational. Um, hard conversations are going to have to be had, but I think if you position things well enough along the way and you're very open and, and communicative, at the end, that hard conversation shouldn't be that hard because it, it shouldn't be a surprise. That's one of right. the things that a lot of people um, sort of miss is if you're open with your communication the entire time, nothing that warrants a hard conversation should be a surprise. Right. And that I, I learned the hard way <laughs> through that. But I mean, I think, you know, I try not to, to look back at the situation, like regret it or, oh, I wish I would have handled this differently or whatever. Because I, I mean, each time, like I just learn from the experience and I'm like, okay, well, next time I mm-hmm. will handle it this way because I don't want it to turn out, you know, like this did before or whatever. So, um, I don't know. Like, I think, you know, I have zero experience or when I started at zero experience of owning a business or being like an executive or whatever. Um, so like literally I just learned everything going mm-hmm. through it in real time, like, which is kind of how everything has kind of mm-hmm. happened in my life. And, in, in the, you know, with my career with WWE was just like that kind of just thrown in, I call it the Oh shit method. Um, so that's kind of just how I handle everything. And, um, I think that it's developed this like, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's, and it's not like an overconfidence, but it's kind of like, um, and you've talked about this with me before. There's like a term for it, but I I can't remember. And you'll probably say it when I'm done, but, um, where you kind of have this, like, you're not technically qualified for something or you aren't imposter syndrome. Right. I thought that was really cool when you talked about it. I didn't create that. I wish I did. (laughs) But I mean, you told me about it. Yeah. So so what is imposter syndrome? Um, it It's basically this idea that like, so we, we take you and, and you have minimal college, right? I believe yep. it was. And you went to uh, college for cosmetics. No. No. Cosmetic makeup. It was, I went to school special for fine, makeup. I went to school to, for fine arts, fine but it arts. was going to eventually, I wanted to do special effects makeup and like set design and stuff. Okay. So she went for painting clowns. <laughs> um it's this idea that you just you don't belong where you are. You don't deserve to be successful or, you know, I can't run a company because I don't have the right I don't have an MBA from Harvard. Well, I have no business creating an app. And it's it's this frankly complete bullshit you tell yourself that I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I don't have the right education, um I don't have the right money, like uh it's just complete garbage that you feed yourself and and you know, I've struggled with it forever. Um because I, I just haven't done well academically uh, for the majority of my career. But it took, like, grad school. I went to grad school, and it, and it took me realizing, oh, I just actually have to care about this stuff because I got a 4.0 in grad school. No problem. And it was, it was great. It was an amazing experience. Um, I think that's one of the things, and I don't think you actually suffer from that because you're the, the thing that we've kind of come to find out is – you don't really doubt anything that you're doing. You're just like, oh, okay, cool. So this happened. I guess I got to figure out how to fix it, <laughs> right? You may not know how to fix it, but it's not like, I can't do this. And you, yeah. you, you know, there's, you never throw your hands up. And that's probably because of your oh shit method of there's nothing you can do about it, right? So you might as well just get to work. Right. You just, because if you, I don't know, there's been maybe three or four really pivotal moments in my life where 
I either had the opportunity to be like, nope, can't do this. Or I'm like, well, okay, here I am. Let's just do it. What do I have to lose? And that has kind of like mentally mm -hmm. prepared me for, I feel like almost anything. Um, I say that <laughs> now that I get to call you crying tomorrow for something. Um, but it's just, it's kind of, I've learned how to, um, and I think that's actually kind of a personality trait too, is to, to just remain extremely cool and calm under pressure. Which is grit right yeah you have grit and i think your grit comes from the interesting thing is that it, it comes from one your upbringing right and the people that sort of are taking the time to learn your story know that it's not all sunshine and rainbows but two literally your job was to get beat up <laughs> weekly right yeah. um you know I, I equate it to years in the weight room with brian right it's grueling it's brutal but you, know, you get two thousand pounds sitting on a, a leg press what's what's a deadline on a report right? right you faced you face physical harm this stuff is nothing right right there's no reason to stress out and i think that's that's where you get that from is you know you've how many times you get hurt wrestling oh, every time almost yeah. right you're i know i mean every stuff other week hurts. you're telling me you're getting hurt if it's that's the stuff you're facing what's writing an article right what's oh, i gotta get this stuff done on a deadline well you know what i'm not getting hit with a folding chair so i should be <laughs> I have folding chairs upstairs from the TLC match in like 2013. If you want to hit me with one later. I do. We'll close out with that. Um, I have this, it's, uh, I had this match with Natty one, uh, one day and we were practicing, we were working on a hold and she, Natty's like, you know, trained in the dungeon, queen of a thousand holds. Mm -hmm. And she had me in this, like, and I'm very muscular, so I, like, I don't bend in certain ways. I'm, I am consider myself, like, partial, like, I'm sort of flexible, but this, she had me in this crazy hold. I don't know what it was called. And she, like, set me down, and we were outside the ring, because somebody needed the ring for something. It was before showtime. And she set me down, but she set me down on the mat, but it was right where the ramp ended, and it, they were both black, so she, there, you couldn't see what was hard wood and what was the mat. So she sets me down and I, and she sets me down kind of hard and she, and mind you, I can't put my hands down in front of my face to protect me because she has my arms and legs like wrapped in this crazy hold. So it sets me down and I hit my chin on the ramp and it, um, it was a part, you know, your chin's like real bony right mm -hmm. at the bottom. And so it just slices uh, and your face is like pretty vascular. So it slices my chin gushing blood down my neck, all over my shirt, on my shoes. And so as wrestlers, we have this mentality like, oh shit, don't let anybody see it. We want to have our match. Like, you know, um, cause if you're cut open and cause they don't like blood, like these days, it's not like the attitude era or whatever, where they, <laughs> they love the blood now. Like if there's blood, they usually stop a match. So we like, it wasn't our match yet, but we didn't want anybody to know what happened. So like I cover my chin and I sprint backstage and I run all the way around the arena to a bathroom and I'm like <laughs> holding it. I'm holding a paper towel on my chin and, and Natty, Natty finds she runs after me she finds me and so we're both in the bathroom we're like oh my god oh my god oh my god it's bleeding so bad I think I'm gonna need stitches and she's like no shit no and uh, cause then we weren't gonna have our match like if I had to get stitches on my face so um finally like 10 minutes later it would not stop bleeding and we're just like what do we do and so the trainer finds us in the bathroom because there was a trail of blood that's how <laughs> bad it was bleeding and so he was like he was like come on you need stitches and so i had to go get stitches and then i had to go see like vince or whatever and like show him and then the trainers were like she's okay she can wrestle so then they put this like like a, the, the they, mm -hmm. it was like seven stitches, it was nothing, and then the liquid bandaid, and then a, a skin color bandaid over it, and so during the match, they zoom in on my face. It was like during a hold, and the, um, you have a chin strap. The, the bandaid band was just flapping off. <laughs> it was so funny, but like, but literally, it's stuff like it's stuff like that compared to yeah. Oh well, I have to stay up really late yeah. and finish like a, a article for whatever. Um, they're not really comparable. <laughs> Um, I still have the scar. Um, it's pretty tolerable in comparison. Yeah, right? it is. It's a crazy though that my life was like that, but it did really kind of prepare me to like not be phased by stuff, which is cool. Um, so how does, how does someone who maybe has like the passion, um, and like the qualifications and like really, who really wants to get into a career, like men with, with mentoring or coaching, like how do they do it? Um, you you got to find people that – so the interesting thing is is I don't think people that want to be mentors or coaches should approach people, right? Because um, it 
sets the wrong tone, right? Because ultimately, if it is a career, it's it's solicitation. Um, you want people to approach you. Um, so with your van, your windowless van yes. with candy. Yeah, that's how I travel. I <laughs> um, with bikes and candy. <laughs> so you know, you you have to sort of have a reputation or, or the qualifications, as you said, right? Um, do everything you can to prepare yourself. Read, study. Uh, I don't think you need to go to school for stuff like this. You just you need to you need to learn people. You need to have business understanding and acumen experience. Super beneficial. I was very fortunate to have. Um, many many different careers already i'm only what two years older than you mm -hmm. so i for those listening at home i'm not like some 50 year old professional um <laughs> somebody that just has experience and has a point of view um and for people that want to become coaches you have to learn how to a ask questions and a lot of questions because the easiest thing to do for everybody is to just tell you what to do and that doesn't benefit anybody right um it doesn't help you get any better doesn't develop anybody. No, it doesn't, right? Um, and our first conversation was my goal is to ultimately you not need me for this, right? Or we grow together and we do separate or, or different ventures together. But ultimately, I want to I want to prepare you to be to take the next level in your career of a CEO or an executive, to lead multiple companies and to be a thought leader in your space or a speaker or whatever it is. Um, for those wanting to get into that space. It's my opinion. You have to have that mentality when approaching somebody of your job is to make them better, not just be on their retainer. Right. right. And so um, you have to know how to ask questions. You have to be um, biased. Right. Like you and I are really good friends. But when it comes to our conversations, you know, I didn't like or I felt the direction of the vlog. So I was like, listen, how do you feel like these are going? I didn't tell you my opinion immediately. You gave me your opinion. And I said, well, what, do you think it would be viewed like this? Or how do you think this would? I objectively said, based on what you've told me, you're, what you're producing now isn't getting close. It's, it's veering away. Let's bring it back in. Right. Right. It's nothing about hurting your feelings. It's nothing about I'm personally vested in it. Although I, I watch them for brand continuity and you know making sure you're you're representing yourself how we're trying to work on. Um, but it's at the end of the day, I also have the ability to be like, you know what, you need to do this based on what you told me you want, right? Um, and not being afraid to push back on you. And it's because I'm I want you to hold me accountable for those mm -hmm. things. Like I, you, we've established what I want to do with my brand and like where I want to go. And so I trust you to be like, I trust your opinion, obviously. And yeah, you're like a dick about it sometimes, but it's funny. But, um, <laughs> our first conversation to set the tone for Celeste and she didn't really know what she was getting into. I said, I'm going to be your bitchy judgy friend. <laughs> and he is, he's so judgy. It's horrible. Um, but no, and w that helped me a lot too, because it made me rethink the the purpose of the vlog what the, what is the purpose of the vlog mm -hmm. like why am i doing this why am i looking like an asshole with the camera yeah. in my face all the time and like what is the purpose of it and like what do people want, want to get out of it and i have this like you as a weekly reminder okay hey like you know did mm -hmm. you maybe structure this week differently or did you kind of you know maybe write out your thoughts or whatever it is and it's it's helping it turn into what i want it 100 percent to be because yeah. it like, gets really easy for it all to be just fuckery and we say that all the time because it's it's they're funny to watch but then if there's no real takeaway or no real purpose to doing it then yeah it's a waste of time other than just like making somebody yeah laugh. i mean if someone's going to take the 15 20 30 minutes to watch it like what are they going to get out of it right yeah because they could they there's an infinite amount of choices but they chose to give you 20 minutes you should at least reward them with something. Right. And the fuckery is good every now and then, but but that's not what you want to be known for, right? And that's not what we're working towards. We're working towards this image, and and not a, it's not an image. You are it, right? You are that representation of the strong, persevering woman who can do whatever, who doesn't need anyone's permission, who can run her own business and build and grow her own business. Let's make sure the video reflects that sometimes. Right. <laughs> I like always forget to record like the really important stuff. So, I mean, not always, but sometimes because it's 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 hard to be like, oh wait, hold on, say that again. Let me like let me turn my camera on. But I just it's also about just being more aware of yeah. like always having it on me. It's like it really is like a full time thing. So mm -hmm. um, it's and it's just sometimes like I had a really like I didn't put out a vlog one week. Like I had a really bad week, mm -hmm. and there's there's gonna be like times like that, and then some stuff. 
like I, I've been way more open about my per- entire life on like social media and just whatever the vlogs and and whatever. But there's some stuff that you just don't share, and some sometimes you just need like to be a person and kind of like shut it down for a little bit. And then so I've kind of realized that I was like, well, shit, I didn't put up a vlog this week, but. Um, I think that there's like it's okay to like have those moments. Mm-hmm. So I agree. So, yeah. Um, and I, you told me like not everybody has to see like every single aspect yeah. of everything. Nobody wants to know your hair dryer broke. Who cares? <laughs> um, so how does somebody? I'm laughing at my notes because <laughs> I wrote how does someone become like you, and then I wrote in parentheses a piece of shit. <laughs> um, so how does someone f- find like? a mentor or a coach or figure out like how because i feel like a lot of it is word of mouth you know Mm -hmm. you know that that's how i found you is a a mutual friend um so you gotta you ask around right and ask um i say ask successful people or or just you know everybody knows some people that are either a successful or b they're just they're really good at their jobs right um conscious conscientious people um, stuff like that, right? Just to ask. You you asked, you were talking to Brian, and Brian made a recommendation, right? Or a referral. And Brian and Brian had known from experience because I helped him build Gorilla Chemist. Um, just ask around. If you work for a big company, chances are you may have a program. Your company may have a program that has it and they can make an introduction for you. Um, if you don't, and that's it's more often than not that you don't, Ask friends, family, coworkers, or approach somebody who is higher up, um, who's in your field, who, which means that they'll have somewhat of an idea of what you're doing, or um, just somebody who's, pro, you know, someone that you can go approach that may be a little bit uh, level or two or three above you, um, but have very clear intentions of, you know what, I want a mentor. Uh, because here's what I want to do. Like have an idea of where you want to go with your life. Don't just say, hey, mentor me. Right. Um, that's not helpful for either of you, right? You you have to have an idea of where you want to go, what you want to become, what you want to be. Maybe maybe an idea of what you need to work on too. Um, a lot of people aren't that self conscious or self aware. That's fine, right? A really good mentor will help work on that with you. Um, but that just find somebody, find somebody that can listen to um, a good mentor, a good coach will spend eighty percent of their time listening because that's the, that's what the job is. Is you know. I let you say as much as you need to say about something and I'll ask a question just to spur that conversation more if I don't feel like you fully fleshed it out or if I need to understand more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, a good a good mentor is just somebody that's going to be subjective too, right? Like isn't afraid to push back. It doesn't say yes to everything. Like, oh, that's a great idea. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Um, if you do something and I'm like, no, I tell you immediately. <laughs> um, but on the flip side, like, if you do something, the last two articles, or actually the last probably three or four articles you wrote, as soon as I read them, sent them right back to you, said, this is great, this is exactly where we're headed, you know, this is, I really like this and this and this, please stop swearing in the arm. <laughs> Stuff like that, right? You want somebody that w- isn't afraid to push back on you, right. not afraid to push, push back on you or tell you no. Um, and then you have to have somebody you connect with. I have mentors too. I have probably like three of them. I connect with all of them on something. So you, if you have, okay, you said you have like two or three mentors. Um, do any of them ever contradict or do, do you get contradicting advice mm-hmm. or so how do you, how do you decide what's best for you? Like if you say, you say there's two mentors you have and there's like a situation that you're not sure which direction to go in and then they give you two completely different pieces of advice. Like how do you decipher what's best well they're just opinions right? right and so it's it's just two sides of an argument and maybe they're both right in one area maybe they're completely wrong um you have to weigh what's best for you or, or whatever the outcomes impacting maybe it's your company right um maybe it's you you take a thirty thousand dollar hit because we got to hire somebody else but your warehouse is organized and you're much more productive and and the morale is up right those are all wins um it's just opinions and you have to weigh them out. The other thing you can do is only ask one of them. Right. And then, you know, just take their opinion. Don't, don't shop it around as much. Because um, then I think that it becomes like a little bit, if, if, if you shop a question around too much, it gets like diluted mm-hmm. and then you get, you're in the same position yep. that you started in. Cause you're like, well, fuck, I have like all these really like 
you know, these people that I look up to giving me, you know, these pieces of information. So what do I, and also you can offend somebody if you ask a bunch of different people and they sit down and they give you like a heart to heart or like, here's what I would do, but you know, and then you don't do it or you do the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's like almost a little bit offensive, I think. And if, you know, if you look at a mentor, my mentors, they're, they're really good. And that's why I've been with them for periods of years is they don't ever give me answers. They just ask me as many questions as it takes for me to get to the answer. Right. Um, I haven't been in a scenario where, where like there's four right answers, right? There's always, there's never a right and a wrong. It's usually, there's a bunch of good answers. One's better than the other one. Right. Um, no, you know, if you have somebody that's just constantly giving you the answer, that's not a mentor or a coach. Now there's situations where yes, you need somebody to be very direct and very like, here's what we need to do right now because the situation warrants it. But when you talk like, uh, developmental conversations, you don't you don't want somebody that's just like yeah do this then because that doesn't help you grow doesn't help in you, any no, way it doesn't help you think through it right um it you can the point of the mentor and the coaches is, is so you, you never need them again right you get to that point where you outgrow them or you're on a whole new level you're you can answer the questions before they're asked you know you've thought through it you're now two three four steps ahead because right. of all of the work that they've done they they change the way that you think. They change the way that you perceive challenges. And, you know, that's hopefully what you'll get out of our work is you won't call me with problems of, I don't know what to do about this situation or how should we approach this or I don't like this or that. It's, you know, yeah, I made these changes and I did this and this and we incorporated this. Let's let's go do this new thing. Right. Um, yeah, because I, I feel like if it's baby steps, but I've gotten like, past certain hurdles Mm -hmm. and um there's like a ton of stuff that i want to accomplish in 2018 and then like obviously long term so i feel like i've started like you've given me an opportunity to like develop skills that i didn't have before um like reading and writing (laughs) um but she's still counting her fingers (laughs) inaccurately uh no i think what you said about the like the you know having several mentors um, I always like relate a lot of stuff back to wrestling, but um, whenever I first started, uh, I got advice from somebody who was, you know, because I there's so many different styles of wrestling. There's so many different characters and like art moves and different arsenals and like styles. Just th- th- you can be anybody you want to be, and um, it's really like overwhelming. Um, and so, so you know, someone told me in the very beginning to pick three. Uh, wrestlers that you know male or female that i really looked up to that i liked what, you know, something that i really liked about all of them and then pick their brains and you know ask them to mentor you and most of the time that they'll be honored by that or you know like and want to help because mm-hmm. um wrestling such like a weird society that uh the business is special to uh, you know people that have been in the business for a long time so um so you know to pick three and and kind of take what they give you and make it your own and kind of t- interpret it in your own way. Um, but there is those times where you maybe, you know, you've, you know, picked a few people to be, uh, as a mentor and they start watching your matches or your your promos or whatever and they find you and they're like, they, they give you their feedback and they're like, hey, maybe next time do this. Mm-hmm. Or I didn't like the way this move looked. Maybe, you know, snap it a little quicker or whatever the whatever the scenario is and so once you've developed that relationship you know they come to you and like hey here's how you can make it better and there's been some situations where like i've gotten feedback from two different people on a match and i didn't necessarily ask for but i have re- i had reached out to before and they were completely contradicting each other but um so but n- neither of them was wrong mm-hmm. um so i kind of they were both good alternatives to what i did in the ring so i kind of had a take it and decide like okay maybe try both ways next time Mm -hmm. or try to take a piece of each um you know lesson or whatever and make it my own and and but it's hard to not like step on toes or offend somebody especially like in that business but i think that kind of applies to any mentorship relationship um you know in the business world it could right because a lot of it is um you know, we use the term dog and pony, right? It's the dog and pony show when you have to present an idea or an initiative or you want to go do something. Um, and it's no different for the people listening to have small businesses, right? Maybe you need to go get a loan to 
design, you know, maybe um, they want to design an athleisure wear line and they need a loan from the company to source all the materials. It's a dog and pony show. You have to go and show those sketches and you have to show, listen, my projection, here's the market analysis and it's a nice big presentation and um, you can get a lot of feedback of, it. well, you know what? I really feel like you need to focus on these things. Focus on opportunity, focus on value versus cost, focus on this. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about this. It's it's just opinions, right? And it's, yeah, you can offend people. Um, you get just as much, you're gonna get advice from everywhere, right? No one has ever, I, I don't, I've never met anybody that holds back an opinion. Um, <laughs> looks across the table. Um, you know, it, it's up to you to, you have to weigh everything, right? You have to take the good with the bad and, and you're gonna get some advice that is, they mean well, but it may not work and it may not work for you. That move, you know, snap that move a little bit quicker or, or do something before you do a leg drop just may not feel like it's you. Yeah. Right. And you may not be comfortable. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of wrestling moves where they're like, try this move and you just botch the move. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're you, like, my body doesn't move that way. Yeah. I can't do a cartwheel. So <laughs> I can only turn left. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually why I got my left arm tattooed, that's so I good. know that's, so the, that's the arm you work. <laughs> yeah, so in wrestling, you only, you only, you typically, in like 90% of the moves, you work the left arm. So it's like, oh, that's why I tattooed this arm. Oh. It's actually not, but that's what I'm going to tell people who think I'm stupid. That's good. My wrestling career, and I was five, so I'm going to fire. Unless you're doing lucha, then you, then you work the right side, which is very confusing. <laughs> I have like a... R and a an L like written on the inside of my hand <laughs> to decipher. Um, okay, we're getting off track. Um, so do you have anything I wanna there's a question I want to ask you that is not related to anything. Um, but is there anything else you want to add about the whole like what you do for someone on either end of the spectrum? Um someone that's in my position where they need to seek out a mentor or coach or somebody that's like on your end, possibly who can offer those services? Like, is there any like last minute? Yeah, the, minute? the one thing that I skipped over was you got to make sure that there's. Um, I glanced over it rather is that you, you got to make sure there's a fit, right? Like you get along with this person. Um, you know, if you think back to like grade school and you sat in a class and you're getting a lecture on like math, it's not engaging, it's boring, and you don't care because you're not going to use it, right? Coaching and mentoring can fall into that category of just, well, Celeste, I feel like you need to do this and you need to file an S-Corp instead of an LLC. And it's just, it's monotone and it drones on. Um, you've got to find somebody that you click with, right? I think now 50% of our conversations aren't even work or mentoring or coaching related. We're just yelling at each other, <laughs> right? Or we're joking or we laugh, but we also have a lot of the same interests, fitness and wrestling and um, memes. Memes, yes. <laughs> and I probably hate your taste in music for some reason, but um, you have to connect with somebody, right? Because this is this is human to human. Um, so just seeking out anybody isn't as beneficial as even if it's um, you know a good friend of yours that's subjective can be a mentor to you. Yeah, no, I think that I have like a I have uh, my friend Kelly. She um, I call her sometimes before. I have to have like a conversation that I don't want to have with someone or I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, you're here. you know, before I had you to call for those things, I would call her and say, Hey, Kyle, like, what would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. Or how would you handle this? Or, Hey, fire me up a little bit. And, um, she's always, she's always been really on point with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's, she does a lot of things, but, um, she's like, she's that friend that I go to for that, for that type of thing. So I, I think it can work with friendships too. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, like I, I pay Kelly in friendship <laughs> and hugs. It's like, uh, I mean, finding a good mentor, it's like dating, right? You yeah. can try them out. You don't have to just say, hey, be my mentor. And then you're yeah. stuck, right? Because uh, for the good ones that I've had, I've, I've had a couple people that were just terrible. It's like, it's like good and bad bosses, right? You probably had more bad ones than good ones. But when you get a good one, like you learn a lot. Yeah. And you know what to look for in the next one. You know what to look for that makes the next boss good or you know, the attributes that you like. That's the same thing for a mentor or coach. You can get a lot of advice from somebody um, and it's just not good advice. You don't like how they present it or, you know, you just find yourself not using it. You don't have to ask them for advice anymore. They'll probably give it to you. Just don't listen, right? Right. Um, and it doesn't mean that they can't change based on your feedback of, you know what? 
a lot of the advice that you give me or your feedback uh, doesn't resonate with me or it's not helping. Um, a, keep it to yourself or B, you know, take that into your account when you're giving me advice. So it's, it's always a two, it's always a two way street. Um, you know, it's uh, the term in business is called managing up, right? You, you coach your boss as much as your boss is supposed to coach you. Do you find that you sometimes don't listen to your own advice? Yeah, of course. Everybody does, right? You guess and you <laughs> second guess and then you triple guess your, your original guess. So that's kind of like the point of it's the having. Yep, it's the person on the outside that can say, you know what, I don't think you should do that. Or, okay, tell what did you learn? Make sure that you actually um, learned something from you went to a trade show and it was outside of your comfort zone. And okay, cool, it was great. We'll never do that again. Right. Right. It's it's someone that just helps you learn and grow and develop. But at the same time, you know, it's on you to actually listen and take the advice. Yeah, because I feel like. You know, you can give me advice on something and then you be in the exact or a very similar situation, but not be able to look at yourself like from the outside or like all situ consider all situations. And Is this where my intervention begins? <laughs> like I have like your family, like, <laughs> uh, no, I just think it's easy to be able to not easy, but it's easier to be able to look at someone else. It's very like, easy to give advice. It's very hard to take your own about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like a huge, a huge thing. Um, I would, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't take my <laughs> advice. Uh, okay. So I think that we should maybe try to do this a little bit like more often. Um, so if you guys enjoy this or hated it, please tell us. Uh, and you can tell me on my Instagram or my Twitter, um, or you can send mail and I'll talk about it on my vlog. Okay, um, that's it for me. And Chris on, what is it, Trashcast? <laughs> I don't know what it's called at this point. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Unglamorous Life. Please subscribe to the podcast and leave us any feedback. Go to celestialbodies.com and laurenconlin.com. And remember, life is unglamorous. I'm looking in places, but I keep guessing wrong.